How do you know what you should choose here for your U in DV terms when you have the integral of X sine of X dx? I remember this was very frustrating for me in college because sometimes I would make the wrong choice. But you gotta remember that a big thing with calculus is sometimes you're gonna make the wrong choice for U in DV, and that's okay. The main idea is you just try again, and with experience, it actually gets easier. You end up doing a better job choosing the right thing from the get-go. And part of that experience has shown me a really cool trick because whenever you see an integral that looks like this in this particular way, it makes it really clear what U should be. If you think you know what I should choose here for my U and DV terms, leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well. So let's proceed. I'm going to choose U as this X term here. And the reason why is because if you think of the integral here, I want you to break it up into two parts, F of X and G of X. This F of X term can be X and G of X can be sine of X. Whenever f of x is a polynomial, just some general x to the n term, remember that taking the derivative of a polynomial always reduces the power by 1. What this means is that for a general x to the n term, if you take n derivatives, eventually you're going to get rid of that polynomial altogether, and you're going to get a very simple integral. So by choosing x as my u here, now you take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to the variable you see. On the left-hand side, you see a u, and so its derivative will be du, because it just becomes 1, right? On the right-hand side, similarly, the derivative of x with respect to x just gives you this differential dx. Now, on the right-hand side, the way I think about it is I pretend that I make the u term vanish from the original integral. Pretend that x isn't there. What do you have left? Well, it's sine of x dx, and that's going to be your dv term. Now, with dv, you have to remember, we're not choosing v originally. We're choosing dv. We have a differential. So unlike the u term where you're taking the derivative of both sides, you're starting with the differential here. So you have to work backwards and integrate to find out what original function we have a differential for. Now, if you integrate both sides, the left-hand side is in terms of v, right? So the integral of dv itself will just give you v. Now, the right-hand side actually gives you negative cosine of x, not positive. Because if you remember, the derivative of a positive cosine of x gives you a negative sine of x. But we started with a positive sine of x. So it's basically a flipped sign. Okay, so moving along, the integration by parts formula is uv minus the integral of v du. And all we're doing here is we're going to be plugging in our choices of u and v along with du. So u itself is x. V is negative cosine of X, and that gives you this product on the left-hand side. And then we're going to subtract the integral of, in parentheses, V, which is your negative cosine of X. And then your DU is simply the differential DX. Okay, this looks like it's a harder thing to solve, but it actually isn't. Because X times negative cosine of X simply gives you negative X cosine of X, which is going to be part of your final answer. There's nothing left to integrate there. Similarly, it got simpler with the integral because check this out. We no longer have a polynomial under the integral. We just have a trigonometric function. So minus negative cosine of x, you can bring the negative out from the integral of negative cosine of x itself, and the two minuses become a plus, right? So you're simply integrating plus cosine of x, which we know to be sine of x. And of course, this original problem was an indefinite integral, so you want to also make sure that you add this plus c at the end. And there you have it. Okay, well, that was simple, but what happens if the original problem was x to the fourth sine of x? Well, the same idea applies. You keep doing integration by parts, and your final answer is going to expand to more terms, but the, the main takeaway is you're going to always keep applying this idea of choosing u as something you know that when you take its derivative gets simpler. So I like to just simply choose u again and again as this polynomial function because I know for a fact that I'm finally going to get to a term where that polynomial knocks itself out when you apply enough derivatives to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out this playlist. I'll catch you later.